So now we want to revisit a reaction we looked at earlier in the semester. That was the anti-Markovnikov addition of HBr when it's added with a peroxide. So here, R-O-O-R, uh, kind of being the generic symbol for any organic peroxide. Uh, and in this case, uh, it goes anti-Markovnikov, which was very different than the normal addition of HBr, which goes Markovnikov. And we just kind of said, well, it goes through a totally different mechanism, but we'll study that mechanism later. Well, we're at later here, and we're going to study that mechanism. So it turns out the normal addition of HBr goes through a carbocation, but with a peroxide, it actually goes through a totally different mechanism involving radicals, and hence the relevance to this chapter. Uh, now, this is the one reaction in this chapter that is actually an addition reaction to an alkene. All the others were substitutions. Uh, but this one's an addition here. And it turns out that the first thing that adds is the bromine. So leaving the radical to be on the more substitute carbon. So the bromine adds on the less substitute side to get the more stable radical intermediate. So it's exactly opposite of what we did with plain old HBr. With plain old HBr, it was the H that added first, and it added the less substitute side. That way we got the more stable and more substituted carbocation. But here it's about radicals with the bromine adding first. Let's take a closer look at the mechanism. So if we look at this mechanism here, it all starts off with the peroxide. The peroxides have a rather weak oxygen-oxygen single bond, and this usually starts with that bond being broken. And that's going to form us a couple of what we call alkoxide radicals here. So where we have an unpaired electron on the oxygen there. That's our alkoxide radical. Uh, and in this case, uh, this is one of the rare cases where we not just have one initiation step, we actually are going to end up having two. So it turns out that alkoxide radical is going to react with a molecule of HBr now, and it's going to abstract a hydrogen. So homolytic cleavage here as well, and we're going to form an alcohol. But we're also going to form a bromine radical, and it is this bromine radical that's going to be involved in our propagation steps. So it actually took two steps to form it, and so these are our initiation steps, if I can spell initiation. So, and this one kind of, the first one follows a general pattern. We don't start out with a radical, but we end up with two radicals. But the second initiation step's a little bit tricky. We start with a radical and end up with a radical, and that's usually the hallmark of a propagation step. This is kind of one of your funky exceptions. So it turns out it's not just enough to memorize your patterns and stuff like that. In this example, uh, your propagation steps are the sequence of two steps where you form a product, and neither one of these is part of that. These are the two steps leading up to it. These are both initiation steps. So just pointing out the trickiness here, the little bit of an exception as to what we normally see in an initiation step. Uh, once we're here, it's then one of these bromine radicals that's going to react with our alkene. And so in this case, we're going to do homolytic cleavage again of the pi bond this time. So and we're going to add it on the less substitute side. That way we can get the more substituted, more stable radical intermediate. And so in this case, we've already kind of drawn this radical on the previous slide. So but there's our radical intermediate that we form right here. And then that radical intermediate is going to react with another molecule of HBr. Homolytic cleavage yet again to form our product. So we'll add our H there. Notice I don't really have to draw that H in. I'm just doing it for clarity's sake and we form another bromine radical. And this bromine radical we formed right here can go back and repeat that third step there. So these two steps, steps three and four here, that repeat over and over and over again and form product every time they repeat every sequence, those are your propagation steps. Cool. And again, same thing as before, I'm not going to show the termination steps here, but if any two radicals meet, that's going to be a termination step. And whether it be two carbon radicals, two bromine radicals, whether some alkoxide radicals get involved and stuff like this, don't care. They're on your handout and stuff like that, but I'm not going to take the time to, to go over them in the video here. Um, but again, any two radicals meeting, that is termination.